Hey everybody, I'm Russ from Indiana and welcome to my man cave. Definitely one of the cornerstone pieces uh, is right here. Uh, we were back at my wife's parents several years ago, going through a photo album, um, got to a page and, and all of a sudden we stumbled up on this. It's an autographed postcard of George Gipp uh, from the University of Notre Dame. Along with the autograph were a couple of other items, two original photographs of Gipp. One at the bottom, uh, get presumably on the practice field at Notre Dame in his practice uniform. Photo at the top, it's a little bit rough shape, uh, but handwritten also on the fountain pen ink um, are the names of the players in the game. Um, and right there carrying the ball into the line is George Gipp. I personally have never seen any photos of George Gipp. I know George Gipp is Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Win one for the Gipper is all most people know. These are really unique items, at least as far as I'm concerned. What's your initial thought when you see this? Well, getting to the core of the matter, we're talking Notre Dame. Yeah. Now, I used to think that was a bunch of bull. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but when you go up there and you walk foot on that campus, you know there's something special going on there. I got you, but you know not I mean? the it's same It's Notre time. Dame, baby, and it, it is nothing like a Notre Dame fan. There are psychotic Notre Dame fans out there, and I'm sure they'd love a piece of this history. Why are you going to call them psychotic? Can't only be, the can you best be way. fanatical? <laughs> I mean, why, why you got to go put them into some mental institution? I'm, I, in that case, I would be, You're one of them. I'd be okay. a permanent resident. Gotcha. But. This guy's going to want to know what this thing is worth. I wouldn't get if there was a gun to my head, I wouldn't even try to guess at this, and I'm sure you probably wouldn't want to either. So No, I would. I'm all ears. But I'm not going to. Oh. The thing is, <laughs> because it's really worth what somebody's willing to pay. You know, to me, there's not a second doubt in my mind. You put that in an auction and let everybody go fight over it. I think we're going to have to pitch this one to the, to the owner. Hey, Russ. How are you? Um, I'm good. Tony, Tony from Man Cave Millionaires. I'm sure the uh, the other gentleman here needs no introductions. But, Brandon, I want you to meet Russ. Russ is the owner of the George Gipp stuff we were just talking about. Well, I know you take a lot of pride in your collectibles. You've done a nice job. Uh, Brandon and I had a couple of questions. I mean, the story itself is so unique, and I don't think I did it justice. Do us a favor, and for the collectors at home who are watching, explain to us the story behind how you got your hands on these. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this was, uh, you know, everybody seems to have their, um, you know, their garage sale find, right? And we're just going through a photo album. And on the left side is the George Gipp autograph. And next to it are, I guess I'd call them snapshots of Gipp running the ball into the line. And then another shot of him on the practice field with some teammates in the background, kind of just standing looking off a little bit into the distance very regularly. Um, and I just, you know, you sort of froze, right? Like it was the last thing I expected to see when I flipped the page. Long story short, my wife's grandfather attended Notre Dame. His freshman year was the 1920-21 academic year, which was Gipps' last football season in South Bend. I guess my magic question is, are you want to part with that item? Uh, you know, that's going to be a tough one, Brandon. It, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a family heirloom through my wife's side of the family. So um, where I may be interested in at least hearing it out. I think there's going to be a lot of interest in that piece, which is part of the reason why the piece gets good value, even maybe more than what it should get. You know, it's easy to look up, you know, completed eBay listings, right? George Gipp autographs just don't pop up. And, and honestly, I found very little information on items like that. I mean, it's just, it's rare. And It's not in pristine shape by any stretch, but it's not like it's in garbage shape. And that might be part of the allure of something from that era. I think what this comes down to, Brandon, you know, who do we go to? Uh, how does this autograph look to you? And you know, you're the expert and tell me what you think. Well, as far as the structure and the handwriting of it, uh, the flow, it looks vintage, uh, it looks great. I mean, we're, we're compared to other ones that I've seen, uh, it's just a wonderful example. This particular piece is one that I've seen uh, many times, this image I should say. I've seen it many times before, I shouldn't say many times, several times before in our exemplar folder we actually have 12 examples, maybe that's 13 examples of this particular signed photograph. Um, 
I might add that the image appears to have been taken in 1920, the year of his death. Um, he was an All-American three times. This particular uh, you know, player was a big deal. Notre Dame was a big team at the time. Um, he held all kinds of records for the school. I think that Jimmy hit it on the head. I mean, this is a very popular team back then, now. Um, so just Notre Dame is, you know, it's the Yankees. It's the Yankees of football. It's a nice item, and it, it's going to do well when he decides to sell it. Well, that, that raises a question, which is, you know, A, we've got the, 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 the main photo, the autographed photo of Gip that, that Jimmy is feeling pretty good about and you're feeling pretty good about. There are these other two photos, which I have to assume, and again, this is where Jimmy can chime in. If the other two photos are also deemed vintage, what does that do to this in terms of value as a set? versus individual photos? Are we better served matting these in a nice set? Or is this something that a collector at the high end is going to want to say, hey, I want this displayed the way I want? Uh, you guys talk about issues of ultraviolet light and oxidation. I mean, Jimmy, you know, let's assume all three of these are real. I mean, what advice do you give to the collector? This is what collectors want. They don't want the reproduction so much. They're, they're not willing to pay as much for those reproductions. 1920, his final year, the final year of his life, in fact, final year of him at Notre Dame. Um, th this, you know, an alumni would eat something like this up. Uh, the condition, okay, it's not in pristine condition, but there's not a lot from 1920 that still is in great condition. There's very few, if any, where he would sign his first name, George. It seems like it was just popular for him to just sign Gip in this situation. So you're, you're dealing with, this is the earliest star of the, of the team, the Notre Dame team. And he, he was, you know, some, some of his records still stand to this day at Notre Dame. Think of all the people that have come and gone from there and he still holds those records. So amazing piece. I mean, it, it, if there's less, there, there, there's, I, I would venture to say there's probably less than 20 examples of this man's autograph in existence. And I'm probably having my file, you know, 14 or 15 of them. And I'm sure and in all my years this is the first one I've seen. You no, know, it's, it's a great, great yeah. piece. And, you know, you, you, you kind of, what you do is you kind of overlook the, the condition in a sense, you know, the, some of them are better than this that I've seen, but you know, if you really want one, what do they come up in auction every four or five years, one pops up, this would be considered a rare order. One actually did just sell earlier this year. That's why all of a sudden that four or five years just got thrown out the window. But it, the, the point is, is that, uh, you know, you might not see another one for six, seven years. What's our goal here with our friend in Indiana? What, what do you yeah. want to do with this guy? Well, the fair, the fair thing to do with that item um, is really probably auctioning it off because it's going to be the value of what somebody's going to be willing to pay. And I don't, wouldn't hate to lowball him because that's not what the show's about. And um, that's how you're going to maximize the value of that photo, by putting it in an auction, talking about it in the Notre Dame fan, you know, forums, and, and see where it goes. I don't know if our friends going to want to sell this so quick, but... Jimmy, the, the, the last one that you know that sold recently, was it a similar photo? I mean, could, could we do an apples to apples based on that last one? And what was that price, again, that it actually wound up going for? I believe um, April, it was around 7,000, but I wouldn't want, I mean, it's, it's strictly a barometer. It didn't have the other two pieces along with it. Um, uh, it was a major auction, but I can't tell you about the write-up. The way it's presented, the time of year, all you need, it, it's not, it, it doesn't take one person that's really hungry for this piece. If there are two people, you know, the sky's the limit. You know, if, it's, if, if everybody's feeling good, money's flowing, drinks are flowing, or whatever the case may be, the, the, the item could sell for more money than Brandon or I could even imagine. I don't believe anyone can buy this thing for just a couple of thousand dollars. It's going to go for more than that because that's when, you know, a dealer steps in and says, I'm not going to let this one go. I'll buy it. I know I can make money on it. This is one of those things that I think would be fun to watch at auction, provided we market it, we write it up the right way, and we get the right folks around the trough to feed. Uh, Brandon, what, what do you think, man? 
I agree, but you know, he seemed pretty hesitant about selling it, so we'll see what he thinks. I think you've got something. It may not be the wrong time to sell unless you're really emotionally attached to this photo. I don't know if this may be a better time than now to sell it because Notre Dame fans will, will gobble that up. I, I look at it, we're all caretakers for things like this. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate to uh, be able to add that to our collection. This photo was up for auction and it did sell. Uh, Jimmy is very hesitant to put specific parameters around the value of this for a couple of reasons. One is the picture that just sold, we'll tell you what it went for, but this picture did not include the other two photographs that you have. We don't know how efficiently the Notre, Dame, the Notre Dame Alumni Association was informed about this piece. So all those things going into, uh, going into consideration, um, there's some very interesting dialogue to have. Assuming this was for sale, you know, what would be the worthwhile number in your mind, at least for starting conversation to part with it and put it in someone's hands like a Notre Dame alum? You know, I, I've done a little bit of research on my own, you know, back in the day. And I think to Brandon's point earlier, we're seeing the market climb quite a bit here recently. So, um, you know, it would probably have to be around the, the, the $10,000 range, I think, before my wife and I would even consider to, uh, to move on from it. I think it's worth putting in an auction and, and maybe putting a reserve on it and, and see if you go get somebody to go ante up $10,000 plus if you're interested. I mean, we have an auction coming up that, you know, with some really exciting, really good items. So, you know, maybe you put that in there and put a reserve in there so you're protected. The original photos, you know, talk to me about that from the collector standpoint. You know, I've got some type one, some old news photos and things like that, but something like this looks like it was from somebody's camera, right? Almost snapshots over the day. Got to be fairly unusual, I would think. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's, you know, a lot of the original photos, especially from back then where a lot of people didn't have cameras, on the downside of that, you know, every day there's less and less people who understand GIF. You know, the photos themselves, the other two photos, um, are cool in and of themselves. But I will share with you, they're nowhere near in the value, at least from what Jimmy told us, in terms of comparing it, obviously, to a George Gip, uh, Gip autograph. However, packaging these things together, especially with a game shot against Nebraska from 1920. I mean, we don't know who wrote that stuff on the photos, but it had to be somebody intimately involved with the team, which can increase that value significantly. I think when the day is done, this is really about you know, folks like Brandon and Jimmy who understand, A, how to write these items up and how to attract the market for the people who will most likely bid this thing up and make you a, a, a tremendous amount of money. Now, Russ, the question I got for you is, you've been doing some research. Are you aware of that photo, that exact photo that was uh, that sold at auction back in March, April? Not from this year. You know, uh, I, I found one, it's been a couple of years ago, that went in, in, in an auction, similar shot. I don't know if it was the same size, um, but to your point, uh, they're few and far between. There were very few results for sold uh, gift pieces. Back in March, April, there was an auction, and that exact photo uh, sold for right around $7,000, um, which I don't want to disappoint anybody. We all have these ideas of what's in our head. I, I think what makes this unique is a couple of things. One, as we've been told, a George Gipp thing comes around for, available, uh, for availability to the public every you know, four, five, six years. Um, that doesn't mean it's too soon to have another one out in the market, um, but this one has some value add to it. And again, with Brandon uh, assembling additional Notre Dame pieces from some pretty noteworthy collectors, uh, we're very confident that we can, uh, A, get the right people in the room or the virtual room as be the case. Um, we, unfortunately, we can't have an open bar in a virtual uh, auction, um, but it doesn't mean that we can't get three or four rabid Notre Dame fans who just got to have this, especially through the Alumni Association. Well, we could certainly put that, that group of items in there. We have an auction that's kicking off right at the end of July, and uh, we could probably insert that in there with a reserve um, and see where it goes, see what the value is. Um, and you'd be surprised. It may, may get over. Uh, it's not a, it would be a crazy idea, but if you're not as crazily emotionally attached, it would be a bad idea. Would a football season, an auction during what was traditionally football season, does that help? pieces like that move everybody you know it could but in this particular scenario you know august the auction will be in august this year and that's when you know there'll be a lot of talk about football um 
you know, you have people's attention. If there is no college football, can they you make an argument? They want a few more months of boredom. <laughs> well, but, can you make, boredom. <laughs> but could you make the argument that people still need their fix, and that could make an auction like this yeah. all the more exciting? You know, I, you know, unfortunately right now, I think we're going to hang on to it. Um, you know, if, if it had been a, a flea market find, I think it would be a completely different story. Uh, the fact that my wife's grandfather, uh, as the family lore goes, he was at Notre Dame. He was at Notre Dame at that time and got it directly from Gip. Um, you know, there's kind of a personal connection to it, and it connects us to her, great, her grandfather who has passed away. So, um, you know, right now it's, it's part family heirloom, part you know, big-time sports collectible. So sure. your call right now, sit on it, enjoy it. It's great stuff, guys. I appreciate all the information. Thank it's you. Definitely- but how does it feel knowing that something you found just being a good son-in-law is worth somewhere between 10 and maybe in excess of $10,000? You know, guys, it's like exciting, right? As collectors, we're all, we all hope to have that fine someday, right? Whether it's an antique shop or a flea market. And the fact that it's part of the family history, I think, is even more important to me. Tony, I, I'm not disappointed. I, I'm excited. I don't. There's so many different things. I, I only get disappointed if people have things and they're just sitting with them and not enjoying them. You know, our, our, our show here is just to broadcast the joy of having these types of things and finding them. If they decide to sell them because it's going to bring them more joy, doing something else with the money and somebody's going to get more joy having it, then I'm happy to do it. That's where collectible exchange and, and uh, Man Cave Millionaires, you know, is all about. You're right. This, this is what the hobby is really about. It's a great piece. And uh, I'm sure there are plenty of other people who might want to, <laughs> that may be disappointed. But yeah, this, yeah. this is what it's about. It's not about yeah. the dollars. It's about the piece and, and what it means, especially this is a fair- I didn't say it wasn't about the dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I just say <laughs> it could be both. <laughs> it is about the dollars, and it's, you should be feeling a joy that you know that piece is worth a lot more than you thought. But you can still enjoy it; doesn't have to sell it. We're not giving up, but at the same time, we're glad you're enjoying the piece. Let's hope there's college football, yep. and uh, we'll all talk soon, guys. Make sure you check out more Man Cave Millionaires.